back in this bitch, uh No, we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came to quit Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 Podcast Where we always keep it 100 I'm your man Harrison <laughs> Jokes just started, people, calm down Thank you. We got a good, good, good show geared up for you today. And um, I am joined by my main man. You've seen him on a couple episodes that we had. We had the Drink Champs uh, episode. That's where we first introduced him on here. And he went ahead and started his own ventures. If he's not making sure we uh, break the roof, turn the roof up, throw uh, what is it, raise the roof on the ones and twos. He has his own podcast, Grown Folks <clears throat> Logic, DJ Therm, Therm Rizzle, Thrizzle, Thrizzle. I call him uh Shaquille O, you know, dunking it in. I'm not going to say the name because we on the air, but we got Therm on the beat, ones and twos with us. How you doing, my man? Man, I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me back on, man. That's enough of that. Yeah, because you definitely it, cut me off with the claps, but I appreciate the applause, man. Everybody can pull their applause to the end. Well, I appreciate you coming back on with us today, man. How's everything been with you? It's been a minute since you've been on the 8192 podcast. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Like you said, um, venture out, start a um, own podcast with my girl Afia. Um, shout out to her. I wish she could be on, but she got some family things going on right now. You know what I'm saying? So definitely keep her in your prayers. Um, but you know, life is good, bro. Life is life is good. Um, I can't complain. And it's not the grown folk. It's not grown folks' logic. It's the grown folks' table. I got the grown folks part right. So excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna hold it against you, man. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold it against you, man. I appreciate that, man. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get better with the days. Hey, man, listen, one day at a time, brother, one day at a time. So, um, you know, you've been starting your own podcast, Venture, and um, I wanted to ask you how's the experience been? I think you've been coming up on your first year. Yeah, um, bro, listen, when I first reached out to you about starting a podcast and you was telling me everything that went into it, I was like, bro, it's a lot. And then once I dove into it, it was really a lot because I started with just doing like Facebook lives or whatever, right? And then, um, you know, I was like, well, let me put it on the platforms. And then I found two co-hosts and things didn't work out that way. Um, you know what I'm saying? And so I was like, all right, well, let me put it on the back burner again. And then I found my co-host now, um, F. And it was good, bro. It was good. Uh, we got a very um, dynamic relationship. It's almost like a love-hate relationship, right? So it might be times that I feel strong heartily about something, and she's just like, nah, bro, you wrong. Or she feels strong heart. I'm like, nah. So it's like, that ain't even it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get where you coming from, but nah, I can't support that. And she's very outspoken and I can be very outspoken. And I always tell, I'm like, the show is really all because of you. Like, I just, I'm just here, you know what I'm saying? Because she really bring that energy um, when she's passionate uh, about a topic. So when she bring that energy, it's like, sometimes I just sit back and shut up and I'll be like, all right, you, you good? I just want to move on to the next topic now because I don't think I need to say anything else. But it's a lot of hard work, bro. That's a lot of hard work. Trying to Kinda get explain to people uh, what the grown folks table is about, like the gist so, of the show. So the grown folks table is basically, you know what I'm saying, as we was growing up, you know, when grown folks was having a conversation, they always say, stay out of grown folks' mouth, you know, or, you know, grown folks at this table, you go over there, be with the kids. And that's just what we wanted to bring to the show, you know, like now that we're older, we can have these conversations that, you know, the grown folks, quote unquote, was having when we was growing up because, you know, now we are the grown folks, um, and we try to cover everything except for maybe like politics. Try to stay away from that, um, you know what I'm saying? But just real world issues that we deal with as a community that we see social media things that's going on in the world. Just a little bit of everything. What has been, I say, some of the, probably the hardest things to do as far as having a show? Um. Just being consistent, bro. Won't even lie to you. Um, so I live in North Carolina. She lives in um, Virginia. We try to do the show um, in person just so we can feed off uh, each other's reactions and things like that. Just how our relationship was built and have it as natural as possible. Um, and we wanted to put it on YouTube and things like that. But like I said, me being here in North Carolina, she being in Virginia and 
our schedules and both of us appearance, it really makes it hard to just be consistent. And for the last couple of months, that's what that's what gave us a major hit was just the consistency. What do you um you know, like you said, consistency, you got your first year under your belt, year two coming up. Uh what do you what are your plans for year two? Uh year two coming up. We got a couple of interviews lined up, um, which is, like I said, consistency and um, probably scheduling, getting those interviews up and running. Um, I got one with my good, my good brother, uh, who's a professional ball player overseas, talking about his journey, you know, to becoming a professional ball player overseas. Um, you know, basically going from being on the NBA scouts radar to now being overseas, you know what I'm saying? Um, Got a good brother that I went to school with uh, back in Payne College who's in the finances, you know, um, want to get him on so that, you know, we can get some financial literacy out here, especially for our community, because uh, I feel like we're behind on that. Um, working with my guy right now, um, DJ Black Boy. He's a uh, Playboy Cardi's uh, tour DJ, but that, that schedule is crazy right there with festivals and everything opening back up. So, Reaching out a couple other folks, um, like I said, me and you done talked. I think you beat me to the punch of getting me on your show, but hopefully I can return the favor. So that's what we want more uh, more interviews, you know, to come this upcoming year. What about Thurm? What is Thurm got locked in for the end of twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three going into it? Man, listen, bro. I, I'll be honest with you. Right now, the way things are going in my life. Uh, it's way too early to um, even put a projection on it. You know, I'd be lying to you if I say I want to do this and I want to do this. I don't know right now. But if you had asked me this question probably a week or two ago, um, like I said, definitely getting back on the ones and twos. Um, trying to, I want to try to, you know, get in the local party club scene down here, DJing, uh, upgrading the podcast, you know. But I'm looking forward to taking a vacation. I ain't had a vacation in eight years, so yeah, seeing my kids more. That's in a nutshell. That's where I'm at right now. I say, um, you know, for over the last about to say month or so, um, you know, I've been on here just kind of like doing some like reflecting and you know, usually I kinda open up with like, you know, what have I learned if I did think anything for the week or what was I kind of focusing on? And you know, for twenty twenty two, what would you say therms? focus or point of emphasis on what he could do better has been for yourself? Um, again, I say just being more consistent, man. Um, consistency is key to everything that you do in life. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you're not consistent, then things that you want to get accomplished are not going to get accomplished. So I definitely have to be more consistent, 100%. Okay. What's your happy meter at right now? Uh, today's Sunday. I'm chilling. I'm relaxed. I gotta go to work tomorrow, so I'm gonna say I'm like I'm like a six or a seven, bro. Tomorrow Monday, bro. You ain't too happy on Sundays. Oh, okay, I understand. So you know, we 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 did that deep dive. Like I said, um, I don't really have any like personal per se. I think the last one I'm still kind of working on, as far as what I said last week, I just learned how to walk away. Uh, from things without having to try to not quit. So, you know, I think last week I said I'm not trying to – I feel like if I don't finish the situation, if it turns to arguing, I feel like I'm quitting. So I'm still learning on that one. But just want to get a deep dive on, you know, where Therm is at for his year, what do you feel like he can get better at, just not outside the podcast, but, you know, kind of where you are. You decompress if you got to. Um, move it all around, moving right along. Um, I know Friday night is when I found out uh, there was a loss to somebody. I did actively try hard to try to interview. So um, comedian Teddy Ray died at 32 years old. The cause of death has still not been uh, determined or notified to anybody yet. He was a comedian that I first discovered on all Dev digital. I'm pretty sure everybody has heard a Teddy Ray phrase or seen it. If you haven't, I'll give you one now. I peeped the ass out and I was like, damn, she thick as fuck. Turn around, TT. I was like, damn, nigga, what you doing out here with all this ass? Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Everybody knows something of a Teddy Way phrase, whether you don't know it or not. Even if you know, nigga, you 36. 
I actively try to get Teddy Ray on. If you heard his laugh, anything he's done, like he he was just like all around hilarious person, great spirit. Um, sad to see him go. I'm definitely upset that I never got to like speak with him. But um, if it was any type of pain, you know, rest in heaven. So that was kind of like a sucky way to go into the weekend for sure. But, uh, you know, that was kind of like the only thing I can think of that kind of started. Well, started the weekend off kind of somber um, because it seemed like it was kind of going maybe projecting upwards and then it kind of then kind of stalled. So uh, I know we did. I know I did see that we're trying to get in the works. Did you have anything to say on that? Uh, nah, bro. That double cheat thought was funny, though, bro. <laughs> that double oh, cheat up on the Thursday was funny. But I mean, it's just, it's sad anytime that you know anybody passes away at such a young age. Because me myself, I'm 31, so you know what I'm saying. I was just like, yeah, it's kind of young, man. Yeah, it, or, it's oh, it, depending on how you look at it. It's just weird when it's your age demographic and it hits, you know, you and kind of man, like, ooh, what what could it have been? Especially when it's not like outright. You know, you see somebody when it's somebody that's not living like a life that could suggest a early demise. You, you don't want to wish death on anybody, but somebody who doesn't um, do anything like street life or anything like he wasn't gunned down. So and somebody who genuinely was loved by everybody. It's just a it's just a bad blow that you don't want to see from anybody, honestly. So, like I said, it was a real, real loss. Um, and. Everybody I know is that I've know that has encountered with him has nothing but great things to say. So um RIP to him. I have seen people say, I mean, I have seen people uh well they have released more information on Brittany Griner, which um which I already knew this, but they were saying um that they're going to try to release a prisoner for Brittany Brittany Griner. And <laughs> It's one video of uh these lesbian women doing like a revival song for it. I don't know if I'll put it in here or not. Everybody called them uh bone studs in harmony. Bro, I but, know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but as bad as it is for Brittany Griner, it's kind of sucky. She got caught in Russia, which is like America's enemy. And I just really just want to speak on like it's wild on two things. One, it's crazy that Brittany Griner got to go to jail for women to care about the WNBA. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I don't care how, I don't care how crazy or how upset that y'all got to get at me for saying that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll let y'all know right now. It's crazy that they still ain't went hard for the WNBA. They still ain't because the shot can't even get a hotel room or the Sparks. I think it was Spark or Sparks or whoever couldn't even get a hotel room. Or they flight that got canceled. They taking regular flights. But um, what happened to Brittany Griner? The only reason Brittany Griner is going to get free is because she's Brittany Griner. There are a bunch of people that are detained in Russian um, jails that are American. That you know, of course, when you have somebody of Russian uh, nationality that are detained in America, they're going to want to swap. Brittany Griner is going to get free based solely off her celebrity, and it is a shitty crime, but. She's going to get released solely off her um, celebrity when there are people that are over there for equal crimes or less that you never even heard of. So, yes, an injustice, but Brittany Griner is literally as much injustice as y'all saying Brittany Griner is literally going to get saved strictly off of her celebrity. And it's just wild that people it's just funny, you know, the more we get into it, just people's knowledge and expertise and scholars come out for the simplest shit they don't really know what's going on with um she got caught in russia she ain't get caught in amsterdam she ain't get caught in canada she got caught literally where we send billions and billions of dollars to help like ukraine fight russia you feel what i'm saying like you got caught in enemy territory as an american doing something you could have like jaywalk and they would have put your ass under for a long time um you know what's your what's your take on it? Uh, first off, I'm gonna just be clear, right? Uh, <clears throat> at first, I was like, "Damn, it's kind of fucked up." But then I thought about it. Like you say, bro, it's Russia, bro. Um, do I hate that it happened? Yeah. Do I feel sorry? Nah, bro. Brittany Griner knew what was up, bro. First off, we went over there 
to make a million dollars, which is more than any woman in the WNBA makes now, right? You're in Russia. You know tensions are high with Russia, you know what I'm saying, and the whole Ukraine situation and the U.S. You know what I'm saying? Um, we know that Russia is big on drugs, you know what I'm saying? For the people that don't know that there's never been, you know, across the water or whatever, uh, sex and drugs is really big in the Euros, you know what I'm saying, and, and all that over there. So they, they're really strict with that, right? Sex trafficking, drug trafficking is, is huge. So those laws are crazier, right? Now, so that's that's my take on how I feel about that. You should have known better. You know what I'm saying? You know better, you do better. Listen, bro, I'm not going to fuck up no bag. Can I cuss on you? Yeah, kind of late oh, to okay. ask that. Yeah, my bad. But look, I ain't finna go fuck up no bag and over a vape pen, bro. I'm not finna do that, bro. And I know it's illegal in this country. I'm not finna fuck up my bag. You got a family here. You got a wife. You got a child, bro. No. And then it's another guy. I forgot his name. You know, and that's part of the issue, right? He's been over there for about a year, two years now. He got hit with 14 years. Now they're trying to get him out because of Brittany Grimes. That's like I'm saying. She, they're using her to get another person. Yeah, she's out. a listen, bro. She's a political pawn. And then what Russia's asking for is crazy. Like I give you a a, a a drug dealer, drug dealer for drug dealer, bro. You know what I'm saying? Use it for you. Though I, I'm not going to give you no murderer or no, 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 um, merchant of death or whatever you want to. I'm not, no, nah, bro. And it don't matter if it was. And everybody was like, well, Trump would have got out. He probably would have. Be real with you, man. Because he's selling secrets. <laughs> man, listen, bro. Shout out to Trump, bro. I don't care what nobody say, but I got paid. ASAP Rocky came home. Kodak came home. You know what I'm saying? And listen, bro. It was all right. But all jokes aside, it's going to be a stain on the president. And that's what's taking so long because it's like no president wants to be known as somebody that gave up a murderer and a mass, uh, a mass murderer and, you know, an arms dealer, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's unfortunate. It is. And then to go back to, what you said about women actually caring about the WNBA. I haven't heard women make noise about the WNBA. Oh, we need to support our... I ain't heard that. I ain't heard the LGBT community throw that support out there for Brittany Griner. You know what I'm saying? Other than Bones, Thugs, Thugs, and Harmony, bro. Like, no, bro, listen, bro. All these these organizations and, and for all the listeners out there, I don't want y'all to think I got anything against women or the LGBT community, right? But I am a firm believer that Women will holler equal when it benefits them. LGBT equal when it benefits them. This ain't really benefiting them. So ain't nobody, like those two, they're not up in arms about it. It's not a big deal to them. It's a big deal to more of the black community and the sports community than it is the women community and the LGBT community. That's my personal opinion. I, I've been... That's why I said when she got locked up, she come home, she come home, she don't, she don't. Hey, listen, it is what it is. Do your nine years. We'll see you there. You still going to be 16. You can still hoop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even the sentence was like, she got nine years. That's ridiculous. Like, bro, you knew even her lawyers could told they're going to give you something because they're going to try to make an offer for you. Like, if they like, if they give you like six months, the off, they're not going to be able to trade anything for whoever they're trying to get. Like, they're going to be like, no, nah, let her do the six months. And then, like, we can't get who we want. So it's got to be something of equal value to make the swap. So it's just a political game. Um, I just find it real funny. It's just funny. Let me ask you this. Do you Mm -hmm. think she got too much time? For what she... I put it like this. Marvel won't even... They won't even release certain Marvel movies because they mention Russia. In Russia. So... And that's a movie. So... To do anything in a foreign country that you know don't fuck with us, I wouldn't even go there and I would be like, yes, mass. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just dumb. Like, whatever you're going to do. I don't think she, you said, do, she, do I think she got too much time? Yeah. I thought she got less than I thought she was going to. I thought it was going to give her like 20 years. Bingo. And old buddy that's old that got 14. So when I heard that, I was like, damn, bro, she really won. And I damn, think bro had, bro had the same amount or more. So, we already know, like, Russia ain't really keen on black people, you know what I'm saying? But you can't use that race car when the white dude, the white man got more time. Well, it wasn't even that. It was as much as they, like, they, she was uh, 
LGBTQ. Anyway, they're not really keen on that either. Like it's not as, yeah, it's not as celebrated. I was talking to one guy like Korea. He he was talking about over there in Korea, like the LGBTQ community is not really pressed to celebrate in Korea. Like as much as it's heralded over there, over here, it's not like that all over. So like that in general is another thing. Like is it's certain things that play against she black. She's uh uh lgbtq community like it's a lot of factors that play against her but her celebrity and those those saved her in america and got her back but over there you're a target like you we are you're not russian you like six feet you like six feet six six feet eight you got dreads and everything and she's a she's a very attractive woman but it's we you still it's still very i seen the pictures of britney walking down that all red britney is not ugly so uh it's just you so I'm, I'm you could say all you want it's like she ain't ugly but i'm gonna look that up go ahead look at her in that all red fit when she walking down them cool grays on britney is not an ugly woman but i'm just saying just in general like you going somewhere that hates and if they don't and they hate americans so you know black people are already secondary so it's just it's just smarter not harder know where you're going it's just situational awareness to me but um i just think it is what it is i just think people just is it's just it's just dumb like you know, um, it is what it is. I I just think that people's awareness and trying to get to. We're actually gonna talk about accountability later, uh, on here with a video I'm gonna show you that I just want how people jump on cases and don't really even either get the facts or know the facts. They just want to jump on it. But before we get to that, um, since we own politics, um, Trump got searched by the FBI. He sees eleven, um sets of classified documents and one of them top secret you said that's your boy obama couldn't even wear a brown suit without getting uh what is it called castrated for it this motherfucker can go home with top secret shit talking about oh shit i thought it was something else that was my briefcase this nigga got away with more shit than anybody i've ever seen you think this nigga about to do jail time did bill clinton do jail time did Richard Nixon do jail time? So that's a no. Exactly. That, so you approve it? I'm not. A, I'm not approving it, bro. However, I will say, bro, um, it's not surprising, right? Oh, it's not surprising. Um, what they found didn't surprise me at all. No, nah, bro. Listen, bro. The man was a firecracker, bro. It. I, I'll be honest with you, bro. It's some things that I slightly agree with. You know what I'm saying with Trump. Uh, mainly that pay raise that he gave to the military. I support that 100%. Um, you know what I'm saying? But it's, some, it's a lot that I didn't agree with, but who was going to stop him? Couldn't nobody stop that man, bro. Couldn't nobody. Man, listen, bro. That man do what he want to do. He been doing what he wanted to do. He went on Oprah in the 80s and said, I'll run as a Republican. They'll believe anything, and I'll win presidency. He called it in the 80s, bro. The Simpsons made a show about it. No, bro, it's it's not surprising, bro. It's it's one of those things, bro. It's because it's Trump and he was a former president that it's a big deal. But you and I both know that from sensitive to top secret material leaves where it's supposed to be at on a daily basis, bro. Now, if you get caught, that's one thing. Was he trying to sell it? Did they have proof that he was going to sell it? Did he have the intent to sell it? What was he going to do? Like they, if they can't prove none of that, bro, it's just you... Fuck was he about to put in? Was he about to put in spaghetti or something? I'm fuck. Is he gonna use it for? Yeah, like for some, like you you tortilla soup it, ingredients. It's, right, it's a law. Um, something about like the it follows under the Privacy Act and National Security and all that other stuff and woo woo woo. He might get hit with a charge of that. You know, what I'm saying it's possible he could probably he could probably do a little time. You know, what's so but, funny to me, like the defense for this motherfucker. Like, I've never seen nobody stage a coup. I've never seen nobody have terrorist attack. I've never seen so much shit get away with somebody and then everybody wanted to defend the law to me about everything else. I don't have no issue. Uh, he doing everything I expect him to do. So what he does doesn't surprise me because he's going to do what he wants to do anyway. It's the fact of the matter is you got this motherfucker up here wilding the fuck out and people in their right minds can literally sit up here and justify everything or try to come up here with legitimacy and stuff. Yet you got somebody that is the exonerated five. Motherfuckers wasn't even at the park. You know what I'm saying? It took how long? It took it took it took a it took a it took a motherfucker coming through and confessing 
what, 13 some odd years. And I'm taking it back with this one, but it took somebody, they literally just grabbed people out the park. Now, for your skin color, it is 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 no rationale to it. You know, they ain't, the law don't even exist for us. The law, the, the, well, the let me stop the, you. Let the, me let me let me stop ahead. you right there, right? Let me stop Go you ahead. right there. So the thing with that, right? Even and, and it was a very unfortunate situation. And you know, if you're not you aware of it, you should be. But Trump had a major part in making sure them boys got the books. You know what I'm saying? What boys? And, uh, the exonerated five? Yeah, the exonerated five. He took out, bro. He took out full pay ad as he paid, made sure the prosecutor was good. He he put up a lot of money to make sure them boys get it. They went to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, just in general, like what I'm saying is not the exact. I'm just using them as an example of when you saying Trump, you go on by legitimacy of the law. You sitting over here using law terms and all this other shit. The motherfucker got top secret government shit in his office. He stages a coup on the united states government he sends tear gas to people so he could take a picture with the bible upside down all this bs that people can constantly go defend people say trump is my nigga whatever i don't care about biden biden ain't out there uh changing the world for nobody either all i'm saying is it's just a degree of difficulty for the fair skin is so crazy yet you literally threw one person wasn't even at the park that night he was waiting to pick his friend up you threw him in the worst part of jail forever it's just the the arguments for people of different races is so funny to me when when the law works that's what the that's what the new movie needs to be put not when they see us it's called when the law works for us because it don't and so that will what they need to be jordan peele if you can hear this or watch this episode that's going to be your next um horror film is when the law works for us and the whole scary movie is you sitting there going through and wondering how the hell are you getting off knowing that this shit ain't real so when you wake up though in the end is gonna be when you wake up in jail serving a double life fucking sentence because you knew at the whole time that you was out there getting away with shit that you know wouldn't be supposed to be uh happening for you so if you steal that from me also jordan i'm just letting you know but it's just it's just wild to me that what they can find this motherfucker's office um and yet michelle's called all type of monkeys and shit obama was this and that Obama could have never got away with half the shit Trump got away with. And people still defend Trump every chance they get. And I just feel that this whole thing is going to be about accountability. This whole episode. But Trump has I power, just, bro. That, and that's what I was saying about the exonerated fire, bro. Trump has power. The law does not pertain to Trump. We've seen that the way he, before he became president, we've seen it in his day to day life. The law I'm don't. Uh, white people is more of it, it don't. more than Trump. Listen, bro, I had, I had a white history teacher back when i was uh back in high school right and we already knew this country wasn't set up for us but he said this land this country was set up for white wealthy land all the males and you know you had land back then and a little bit of money like you was really like the trump of the 1700s you know what i'm saying the, the steve jobs the you know all these billionaires out here kanye shout out to kanye being a billionaire but anyway bro that stigma that that right there that not the stigma but that sentence that phrase still resonates with me you know what i'm saying and as a black man i don't get upset when i see white people getting off like this bro and i know a lot of people don't want to hear that but it's expected bro and the thing about that is those people back then they looked down on other white people that didn't have money they didn't have land you know what i'm saying and they were you know what i'm saying so and it's still like that today and I so said, you, they start together. So what we do don't you tell? Stick together, bro. We don't stick so what do together. You, what do you teach the next people? Man, listen. Yeah. Honestly, this generation, my generation, our generation, and down, we really got to start coming together, bro. We really got to start coming together. And I, it's easier said than done. We have to, because everything that they have, these other races that they have, this information that's out here, bro. We have the ability. To, to do that. We have the ability to create for ourselves, bro. You know what I'm saying? The, the NAACP gets active when something happens. George Floyd, Trayvon Martin, Ahmaud Arbery, you know, uh, the shooting down in Charleston, they, they get active then. You know, so we need to see more active, you know what I'm saying? We need to see them more active throughout the year. We need, we as a people need to be more active through a year. Like you have a podcast, right? You asked me to hand out some cars, you know, then I pass the cars out to support you. 
You know what I'm saying, bro? We, like we want to, we won't support no like we, bro. We look for a handout, but if you started a clothing line right now, I guarantee you, somebody gonna be like, "Hey, bro, can I get a discount?" Why? You're we not asking the, Louis Vuitton for a discount. You know what the negatives are? We already know what our stereotypes. I'm saying just in general from you, right? We can all finger point. If you know what the if you know what hand we need to do, what role are you playing? Are you playing the role of adding to it? Or are you planning paying? I'm sorry. Are you playing the role of adding to it? Or are you playing the role of improving? Because also just saying what we need to do and not adding to the problem. I'm, just, I'm not adding to the improvement. At adding to the improvement is just adding to the problem because we all know what we need to do. But I'm saying, what actively are you doing to the change? Because I think if you ask every black person, they could all say where our faults are. But I think eventually, pay it back to what you said about consistency. Are you actively up and about it? Or are you just pointing at our faults? Like, are we are you are you the one having somebody point to you and say, I'm not adding to what I'm complaining about? You know what I'm saying? Um, no, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not. And that's why I said what I said, what I said, I don't really get too upset about it, bro. Like, yeah, it, it angers me quite naturally, but I'm I know for a fact that I'm not doing anything, you know what I'm saying, to get my community more aware. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing anything to get my community together. And again, like you said, I know that that's what has to do, that's what we have to do. And just saying what's the issue ain't gonna fix the issue. So the answer to your question is no. And and that's just me being honest. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think that's a lot, a lot of us in general. Like I could really take your same question and ask you the same question. And I'm I'm willing to bet eight out of ten your answer is probably going to be the same. You With know what me? I'm saying? Yeah. I actively I actively help. I, I buy something from black businesses all the time. I just bought something from Cashville Cats. I got donations from people for the Black National Assembly, uh, back to school shoes to make sure all the kids got stuff for the new shoes. Um, I actively, I actively. Um, now I say, damn, you just shit it on me, but nah, go no, on, yeah, I, I, go but on, no, yeah, but no, um, you know, any type of local like art or anything like that, I highlight. Um, I actively try to, um preach or push anything like black narratives um i do that all the time like I, I i don't like my son i try to make sure like we're actively doing something african like he knows some type of route like read a book from this or know this person or what's his history you know what i'm saying like don't just know about the rap music or go back in time and listen to this or see what you could do better or if you want to go to a school look at this hbcu i'm purposely getting my degree at tennessee state university my bachelor's degree even though I have a degree already because I want the degree to go where I started, which was the HBCU. So I want it to be shown that I could get my, I have the credits to get my degree to get my bachelor's anyway. I've already got it, but I want it specifically to be at HBCU because the importance of showing it from there is different from getting it anywhere because I want to highlight the work started from within us. And I want the glory to go to us, not anywhere else. So I make sure I highlight, like I said, it, it's a whole bunch of HBC. I mean, it's a whole bunch of, but I, I try to make sure anything, like I say, even like the clothes I get, like HGC apparel, like most of the stuff I buy, like is black owned or anything. And I try to push it. Um, Most of the, yeah, most stuff I do is try to black push it out. I try to make sure I practice what I preach from that point. Um, Yeah. But like I said, but you're, you're the one bro. Until we get on the masses, bro, like in the black, bro. And like I like bro, I, I really do want to get more active and I support you for that because the black dollar is really powerful. Like we think the dollar is powerful, but the black dollar is really powerful. You know what I'm saying? And I think the direction you're going in is great. I will, say it's, hard. I will say it's hard. I ain't gonna sit there yeah, and say absolutely. that it's not absolutely it is hard to oh my, my best friend, um, he has a food truck. I try to make sure I, I can do anything I can to um try to get like you know how to figure out like how to help him or any type of black business. I will say it is definitely hard to work with black people, but I think that it's hard for a reason because the payout is good, but 
if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's why they try to copy us because they think it's easy. But as soon as we stop helping, they can't do it. So I think that um, we have a culture that is easy to mimic, but you can't replicate it. Mind you, I use two different words. So um, right. you can mimic it all you want, but you can't replicate the culture. You can sit there and have mixed babies and stuff like that. But and no, until you get that, you as a white person, you have just because you have a parent, I mean, a baby with a black woman or a black man, they still got to go to that black parent to get the black culture. And that don't give you the black experience just because you got a black kid in the in the essence. So it's it's not it's not a lip thing to Wakanda just because you get like a halfway in. So, like I said, is I just try to do my part and make sure that I'm not letting the egos and stuff of people deter my view on what the ultimate goal is for us. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I support it 100%, but personally, I think, and just going back to the initial question, yes, bro, he, he do need to face some jail time. Will he face jail time? Probably not, bro, because now I'm starting to coop, bro. I, I see that as an act of treason um, because we hold the, you know, public office so near and dear here in this country and tamper with election and, you know what I'm saying, basically fighting right on, on federal property, bro. Listen, bro, all the folks should have been shot you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just be real with you, bro. Like, but will he face that time? Probably not. If he do, I'll be surprised. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little probation a year or two, but I really need the book. Just being honest, bro. Because he's he, he's a civilian now. He really need the book. So that's yeah, yeah. that's my take on it. Preseason football coming back up. Uh, who you rolling with? How's your team looking? What's your expectations for this football season? How was it like to watch? football again i know that's a loaded question so you know nah, nah, nah. Um, first off um i don't watch my team in the preseason um i really don't keep up with the preseason other than fantasy football bro that's that's really the only reason why i missed uh i missed preseason this week um you know go bit blue i'm a giants fan um but play yeah, bro, one. i mean that's probably gonna be a dub for us, but uh, what was that? I missed that. Mess with your dumb ass down. Folk always hating, bro. It be your own folk, but <laughs> no, nah, bro. Listen, bro. For my team personally, I, I'm not gonna sit here and put myself through it, bro. We we ain't been good the last couple of years, and we ain't been healthy. I'm hoping that we can be healthy. I like what I'm seeing from practice, but um, as you know, you can't really gauge anything from preseason because. You're trying to get a look at your rookies, your second team, your third team, and, you know, who the next man up. Um, but I'm glad that football is back because after the NBA season, bro, it's just depressing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, baseball. I watch baseball, but I ain't going to watch a whole game. Um, ain't really no big sports going on. I don't have a soccer pass. Um, so, yeah, I need this preseason, bro. I need this therapy, bro. I need this therapy. You know, I'm from I'm from Georgia, so down in the South, football, especially in Georgia, you know, is is God, family, and football. So I need this. I need this. Nah, yeah, it's um, it's what you call it. It's it's good to have it on, like having football, because like you said, it's a dry spell. But it's definitely um, it's definitely because it was definitely boring. Like it was even hard to record because it's like really not nothing to talk about in July. But it's definitely good to see football. I will say after week one of preseason, you don't really care about anything else. Uh, it was cool to see Malik Willis and everybody play for the Titans. Um, How you but, feel about Malik? Yeah, we'll see. I have no opinions yeah. on none of the Titans because they let me down. I have nothing to say <laughs> about any of them. Um, I really, it really, they didn't let me down. Tannehill let me down, and I'm not saying anything about any of them until the playoffs come again that's my expectation for him because the regular season is showing me doesn't do shit it's a lot of people hurt right now but practice and preseason will i'm sorry practice training camp and preseason will get your expectations wildly hurt i remember when we first got malcolm butler malcolm butler was tearing motherfuckers up in training camp oh my god malcolm butler is so crazy cooked all year same with Corey davis Corey davis is looking elite motherfucker never had a thousand yard season so I just learned to just let the season play out. Um, Malik was playing second stringers, so that's why it's hard to really gauge him. Uh, apparently, the motherfucker don't throw the ball when they want him to throw the ball. Motherfucker just want to run all day, so that's why he got 
pulled and he's still not throwing the ball. So that's his biggest issue. But I mean, it's a black quarterback. So you kind of just want him to take it, but they're not going to play him. So, but that's kind of like my take on that. Um, two videos I want you to see, they kind of roll with um, like what we were talking about for my last topic about just kind of accountability. So I want you to take these, watch these videos I got for you. And then I'm going to get your opinion on um, what we were talking about at the beginning about accountability. So here, watch them for me right yeah. here. Little Chrome difficulty. So I got like two clips uh, I'm going to show you, and it just falls within the line of our accountability um, theme of the show, really, for accountability of all people. Uh, the first clip for people who don't know and who won't see, uh, I don't know if I'll keep it in as far as what happened. I might keep it in for the audio version, at least for the first clip with the woman, uh, because uh, it's basically explaining what happened, and you'll hear the uh, gist of it. But both of these videos basically are going to be um, people not – showing accountability so i'm gonna go ahead and play it for the folks so y'all can see your hands behind your back. I'm, go- Mr. Brooks, I'm going you're to not, sign her hands behind your back. Sir, you don't have to. You don't I'm, have to. You do not I'm have to. Asking you, why am I putting my hands behind my back? I'm going to sign. She's about to sign the ticket. That's all you wanted to do is sign a ticket. That's all it is. For your badge number, and that wasn't clear on why you weren't giving me your badge. Sir, you don't have. Sir, you do not have to hold her like that. Oh my God. Sir, you do not have to wag her like that. Sir, sir, you do not have to grab her like that. Sir. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen this clip. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Why am I being arrested, Mr. Brooks? I'm going to sign a ticket. Do not tase her. Sir, do not tase her. Put your hands behind your back. Do not tase her. Now, as we see this, it's same old, same old, right? Like some uh, Mm -hmm. police brutality, black woman especially. I'm a black cop at that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, when are we always going to be the victim, right? I mean, so why are we always a victim of this shit? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, oh, shit. Here we go again. It's like we can't never seem to get out of, like, the way the police killed us and murdered us. And it's just always the on site from first, you know, first person perspective. You know, it's always just us getting our ass whooped by the police. They don't give a fuck about us. Now, nah, watch. I hope I was hoping you had the, the, this part of the clip as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we can go ahead and dive into it. I seen this one too. Mr. Brooks after that one, which I found was very funny, but I got one more. Relax, 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 relax. I fight whoever. I fight whoever. Put your hands on me. Sit your dumb ass down. I fight whoever. Knock your bitch ass out. Knock me. Knock your bitch ass out. Knock me. Knock me. Knock me. Knock me.
Knock me it's out. Okay. It's okay. Knock me okay. out. Okay. You saw what she did. It's it's like I said, we talking about accountability on all fronts for this episode. Um, I did have something where I did learn to where I guess a lot of times I will side with men on something, but it does look like I'm attacking women when I'm really just attacking people who just don't hold thing, themselves accountable the way they are and like to claim victim. Um, what we saw from the first uh, video is how it was portrayed from Mr. Brooks was just attacking a black woman without no warning, just arresting her at all. From the second video, we seen a guy at his job in a disgruntled dispute with a woman as she's hurling out slurs and stuff. They both in the wrong, like it's both extra, but nobody interfered except one person. And the moment he interjects and she clocks him, and then he attacks. That's when everybody want to come out their seat and start being men, you know. And and the first one with the woman with the ticket, they keep out the fact that he told her multiple times. It's just a citation. If you don't sign the citation, you will have to go to jail because it, per Atlanta law, that does not let them know if you do not sign the citation, if you're going to show up to jail. That's why she got arrested. So in this film of the first one, She's falling around saying, well, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks. But yet, that's the one they showed everybody of the police looking like they're crazy. And we got every right to be mad at the police. So don't act like I'm out here taking up for the police. But we're talking about accountability. So before I go on my rant, I want to get your opinion on both of these situations. Uh, first and foremost, he did let her know she ain't signed a ticket. She's going to jail. So with that being said, lock her dumb ass up. Lock her dumb ass up because baby girl, you brought this on yourself. Oh, yeah, dude, it's a citation, it's a ticket. Sign that shit, and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? Um, second off, my mama always told me you don't put your hands on a woman, right? You don't do that. Now, me personally, bro, listen, it's a few things that I don't tolerate. I don't tolerate disrespect, I don't tolerate being called a bitch out of disrespect, and I only like being called a bitch. Um, don't spit in my face and don't open hand slap me, bro. I don't care who you eat, but you, you can't you can't do that, bro. I'm I'm not gonna allow that. So you just disrespected me and you open hand slap me in my face, bro. Yeah, nah, bro. Listen, whatever come next, you prepare for that. Cause in your mind, when you physically put your hands on me, you was prepared for that. However, I think somebody should have called TSA or or airport security, whoever. Should have got there first, and it should have been just the people there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we're in a day and age where we like record, you know what I'm saying, almost because we have to instead of interjecting. But, uh, yeah, that's that's my take on it, bro. When he when he retaliated, and if he'd have knocked out, bro, listen, bro, he'd have knocked out, and I'd have been like, well, she, she deserved it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be honest with you, bro. A lot of women feel like, they can put their hands on a man and a man ain't supposed to respond by putting their hands on her. No, bro. That, that don't fly. That don't fly, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it really don't. Um, so, um, go ahead. So, yeah. So, I mean, what, listen, bro, I feel like at the end of the day, he defend himself. It could have been handled differently. Somewhere, somewhere, we're adults. We need, like you said, walking away. It's a time to walk away. You know what I'm saying? The prolonged arguing, like, look, you're not finna talk to me. Like, and it seemed like the airport dude was trying to be reasonable. The same as Officer Brooks, right? But y'all want to be the aggressive. Uh -uh, I ain't signing it. You ain't gonna make me sign it. You not gonna get in my face. Man, look at your dumb ass. You about to get tased and you going to jail and you about to get your ass knocked off. But the, the, I do want to see just like the Officer Brooks, like the other part of the video that we didn't see in the beginning. I do want to see what happened and led up to them getting to that point in the airport. I'm still waiting on that video. I haven't seen it. Still waiting on that part because it's always a lead up unless that's just where the recording started. But I definitely want to see what happened after that. Well, what led up to that before I say yay or nay. I haven't seen the... I'll, I'll speak on the Brooks one first because um, I have a lot to say about the airport video. I'll speak on the Brooklyn, Brooks one First for this one, I have a problem with both people. I have a problem with the people in the video, not the officer in this one. Um, it's so easy for us to die by the police. 
And right. it's so easy to point to stupid ass motherfuckers with a badge that look like us that get in positions of power and abuse it. We do no justice for ourselves by looking like we are crying wolf and recording everything that we can just for clickbait. And when we get in front of the law or the judges and just lose all, um, we lose all, all benefit of the doubt because we go out there and just present garbage. It's been too many people that lost their lives for absolutely fucking nothing for us as a community to go out there and present ourselves with utter bullshit. And that's what that is. That man and that woman both need to go to jail for just wasting people's fucking time trying to cause a fucking scene. The man is a horrible example of a household protector from this standpoint. The nigga had just signed the fucking ticket before she even came out there. So, and if anything, he could have stopped the situation from going there and told her, bro, stop. He already noticed that he was the only one that did not get arrested out of the two of them. So he is at fault there from one. It's for two instances. He's at fault. One. Why are you recording or getting taken down when nigga, you already was informed on what was going to happen Two, hey, hit that little on hit that button. Sit your dumb ass down. Sit your dumb ass down. That's what you get for that. Come on now. So anyway, so then on top of that, you, you, you hit recording asking what's going on. She resisting arrest. It's Mr. Brooks. in. it's Mr. Brooks. Then it's like, you already knew what happened. That whole entire time, you never said anything about what was happening or what's transpiring. So when she's on the ground, don't get the taser. Don't get the taser. You got to be looking there like I could have prevented all this because I signed the ticket. Why aren't both y'all going to jail? The woman, black women, y'all are the most disrespected race already. Y'all never get y'all just do. Y'all need to be heralded, champion, everything. Do not give motherfuckers the benefit to make y'all look like y'all don't know what y'all talking about. I love black women. Any chance, being in the military especially, the first thing that they try to do is label black women with attitudes and everything that they can to discredit y'all integrity, y'all word, y'all honesty, and everything. 100%. Y'all can withstand so much garbage. Y'all are not white women, Karens, and everything that can just fall out crying. No, y'all strength is y'all backbone and everything that video right there was some utter bullshit okay that video starts off with her coming out with an attitude as if she was penelope pope or whoever viola davis played in how to get away with murder like she was gonna come up there and defend somebody when she looked like reese witherspoon illegally blonde with no prior um legal knowledge come up there what's your badge number what's your name the man said his name twice and then on top of that, he said, I'm not giving you my first name. He asked you multiple times and told you multiple times if you do not sign it, you go into jail. At that point, he was never Mr. Brooks then. You ain't know then, but somehow you remember his name when you about to get taken to the ground. It's a five minute video on the Atlanta PD's page. The reason why I stating that what happened, uh, why they had to go to jail is because if you don't sign a citation, this just doesn't means that you're not going to show up or do anything for the ticket. It's a law for everybody. And because it was just two murders and homicides in the park three days prior, y'all sat there and got the NCAA all involved for this bullshit, making them look like a goddamn fool because you was warned. And then you try to, yes, a master, once you go into the ground talking about, well, Lord, why is this happening to me? Don't sit there and pick up instances when you know you in the fucking wrong. Like that's it's accountability on both parts. You is her provider, you're her king, her man, everything. Why are you letting her walk into a land, mom? And it, you as a woman in a dress and everything out at night, you out there getting slung all on the ground because and then you resisting arrest. Like it's not even it's like you was so big and bad until you realize that you was going to jail. And at least, I guess, in your mind, if you put up some type of resist, it can lessen the charge. And, and then now, all of a sudden, like, he ain't giving me my Miranda rights. And, like, y'all learned one or two things off of 21 Jump Street. And now, all of a sudden, y'all going to use it on everything. And it's just, it just, it made no sense. And the shade room and all the motherfuckers is just trash for showing just that one segment. And even the people that defended, okay, well, 
it's other cops that it, we're not talking about other cops. When we talking about one specific incident, I just sat there and said, there's plenty of people um, um, that lost their lives. George Floyd, <clears throat> um, um, no, I'm not wasn't killed by the cops, but George Floyd, Philando Castillo, um, um, what is Gardner who got choked out by the police in front of the store? In, uh, Eric Gardner. Eric yeah, Gardner. Gardner. There's so many instances where that wasn't the case. We even said it um, when they see us, the exonerated five. Like, they, we ain't got to go too far when it didn't happen. So, like, why are you giving it the reason why we lying? It's just, it's wrong. And when you got a chance to be a freaking adult, you don't be in a freaking adult. Switch it to the other side of the airport. A little bit of part of me wants to be um, with you with the whole I need to see the beginning. That man is at his job. He is fed up. They already both wrong. He cussing. He probably going to get in trouble for cussing and all that hollering. You backing me in a wall corner. He's talking and it's already extra. Just walk away. I don't know if he's at his post or whatever. When the stuff go left to me is when she smack him upside the head. When he's um, already being held back. She already putting her hand and stuff in his face. It's already left. Bro, I can already make an argument for you, bro. You should have just stopped talking to her from the get-go. Boom. When you hit this motherfucker, and mind you, she calling him the gay slur and nigga all throughout the whole thing. No man got up throughout the entire video. When she bust him upside his head, no man got up that entire video. Every man wanted to be a man when he decided to pass rush her like Javon curse when he went up there and said oh hell no nah. he loaded the chopper boom came out that cannon and decided to rush her ass that's when everybody said we got to stop him we got to stop. she's still over there calling him the f word the the, uh, the the sexuality slur all this other stuff and y'all want to talk about you can't hit no girl you can't hit no woman you can't hit no woman Y'all is the and especially the guy at the end talking about nah, bro. I can't let you hit no woman. I can't let you hit no woman, dog. Hit me, fight a man, fight a man. You gotta be the lamest motherfucking nigga I've ever seen in my life. I wish, I wish he would have wild up. Let me see if I put. Let me see. I'll fight whoever. Put your hands on me. I'll fight whoever. Put your hands. I'll fight whoever. I'll fight whoever. I would have. Your dumb ass. I would have squared off and knocked him the fuck out and knocked her the fuck out. It's like when Tory Lanes. Shot Meg in the foot, and that was in his limit. In the foot? I'm saying when I I don't know what happened, but when he's when <laughs> it was said Tory shot Meg in the foot, and nigga said that's right, the line right. with women. That's the line. Like all the other shit out here, that's the line. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we could beat their ass. That's the line. So when she busts him upside the head, that's when you that's when y'all don't want to do anything. But when he hauls off and attacks her, that's when y'all want to come up and be men. They both wrong. I mean, I don't I don't condone no man hitting no female in the acts, but I also don't condone you throwing cheap shots at no man and then trying to big, use your sizes. Well, he's a man. He can whoop my ass. And I also don't like these punk ass niggas that only want to be chauvinistic when um, it benefits them or when they can think when the lines matter. I think that as a man in general, your job is to also check women to let them know that you're not going to win this fight. So you need to be a man and sit there and say, Hey, if you see her causing danger, don't be the one just stopping danger. Let her know that you are the danger. You know what I'm saying? Like be a man on all four right, fronts. Right. And as a woman, stop sitting there thinking that just like y'all say, it's hard and stuff for a woman to be a woman in today's time, because you don't know where men are. Stop causing situations yourself like we already know that these men are crazy stop putting yourself in situations to where you lose it and then be like well he shouldn't have did this he shouldn't have pressed her he shouldn't have pressed her there's a certain point at that video to where she takes all the fault and that's when she hauled back and slapped him because there was somebody in between the two of them that this situation could have got de-escalated this is my thing right uh, and I, i've been this is my product this has really been my motto for like the last year or so, right? You know what I'm saying? Because like I have a lot of um I have a lot of female friends, you know what I'm saying? And you know, like we, we talk and I have some really close friends that you know, like, you know what I'm saying, like when it comes down to dating situations like that, I'll be like, bro, what? Like, why are you with bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? 
the way he did this, like that shit lame as hell, bro. And then there's instances like, you know, the airport and shit like that, where niggas just standing on the sideline. You know what I'm saying? Now nah, I ain't gonna say niggas, I'm gonna say men. I'm trying to refrain from that. But this is my thing, right? I agree with you as a man, you feel like, hey, look, shut all that shit and look, shut you out, you out of line. However, right, men today are weird. You know what I'm saying? I know women say that. I, I'm saying as a man, men today are weird. And the reason why I say that is because I've learned the easiest way to say this is people are weird. I've learned. I've been working on it. Don't don't because if you say one or the other, it looks like you have a problem with one. So I'm working to just no. I do. I do. I, no. 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 I do. I, I do. That's why I'm saying men. Oh, because okay. I have a problem. I'm a, I'm I have a problem. I have a problem with men today, bro. And my problem with men today are is that men are weird, bro. You know what I'm saying? From protecting women to treating women like women to, you know what I'm saying, engaging with other men and, you know what I'm saying, wanting to be on the offensive instead of trying to de-escalate the, the, situ the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, men are soft today in today's time. You know what I'm saying? I, I tell everybody, like, I'm, I'm scared of the younger generation, bro, especially the, the young men that's growing up in these times, bro. These little young cats, man, listen, bro. They don't care. They crazy. They don't care. I'm not going to say they crazy. They don't care, bro. Men don't care. And again, I, I go back and that's like I said, bro, with the LGBT community and the women community with Brittany Griner, it's the propaganda. It benefits them. When it don't benefit a man, it's the same thing, bro. Like, it didn't benefit none of them men to get up and intervene in that whole situation until she put her hands on them. And then when she did, then you want to get up, oh, hit me, hit me. Mm -hmm. For what? Bro, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't benefit you then. How is it going to benefit you now? Now you want to stand up for the woman. Now you want to be the protector of the woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you should have been the protector of the woman before it got here. You should have been the protector of your fellow man. Like, hey, like, come on. You got a job to do. Be professional. Can we get TSA? Can we get airport security? Can we get airport police? Can we get a manager down here? Can we get a supervisor? Can we get anybody else? You know what I'm saying? Hey, get on the phone. Call somebody. Hey, come with me. Let's 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 can we what's the issue? Let's get somebody like I don't want you to do anything to jeopardize taking care of your family, taking care of money out of your pocket. Ma'am, listen, you don't need to go to jail for this. This is this is crazy. Let's like let's let's resolve this issue peacefully. All of those men sat there and then I don't know if you've seen it. The uh the one dude, he was like, Hey, calm down, buddy. And he was like, Don't touch me, but he was like, Look, bro, she already put her hands on him and I seen what he did. So me saying, hey, put my hands on you, like, come come with me. Yeah, might get, might get me not. Yeah, not, yeah might get me not. You got to tell me twice, what? brother. Yeah, and these, these other men that just sat down on the side, they ain't finna do nothing, bro. They're going to pronounce a man on a man. So they're going to let this happen. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, bro. Men are weird today, right? I've always told my sisters, I said, hey, if you get in a relationship, right, and you put your hands on buddy, and you call me, Yes, I'm still going to come because you're my sister, bro. Like, damn right, bro. You know what I'm saying? But then once that all, once me and him handle our business, now I got to come and handle you because what possessed you to put your hands on this man thinking that it wasn't going to be no repercussions or that you was, you was good like this? Especially if I know you're not built like this. You're not built to put your hands on no man. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. There's some women out here that's built to put their hands on a man. I'm not talking physically like they got hands. It's some women that niggas and some strong women. Like, we ain't yeah, saying yeah. I think it's all but about, it, like, just but, accountability. But overall, yeah, the overall the accountability, like, bro, did you put your yeah. hand, you put your hands on him? Yeah. Okay, I'm not like, saying that, I'm not saying that you warranted that it should have happened. I'm not saying that. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand, it's just naturally in a man's mind to be a fighter, to be a provider, to be a protector. I don't even want to say yeah. it's a man's mind. I think if you hit anybody, they're going to fight. anybody. And I just anybody. think that when you hit somebody, I don't think you should cry wolf. I, I put it like this, and I'll answer this. So this goes for my people, and this can be for my lesson for the day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to the end, and this is my lesson for the week. My biggest thing is accountability with people. Um, If anybody knows how I was raised, um, I had to be accountable for everything. So I didn't get that excuse when um i was going back and forth with my father about anything when me and him were say having the same we were told we were the same you know what i'm saying we're gonna close the episode out like this we were told we were the same they was told everything um when we had attitudes we got into arguments i was the one who had to sit there and be held accountable for what i did even when i'm arguing with a grown-ass man 
Um, when I got in trouble with school, I was the one, and I'm not saying I wasn't wrong in these situations, but the excuses, whatever I said, didn't matter. I had to be full frontal, even in the situation, like I said, with my parents, they didn't, it wasn't them. It wasn't, he apologized. Even if he was wrong, I was seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, I had to be held to the standard of everything. And so I didn't get that break. And when I was 18, 19, when I had Zay, that, that shit went out the window. When I'm in court and I say I ain't had no receipts, but I took my, care of my son all the time, but you were the one who supposed to have receipts. You got to go on back pay. I was held accountable that. There wasn't no excuses. So all these excuses from people she is she that like she a grown-ass person is he a grown-ass person were they informed were they this did they decide to make a decision yes 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 and so the reason why i guess it could also probably be just because i wasn't afforded that but i also know that accountability is something that we seem to let people get away from and i think that's my biggest issue from all these situations like i said you taking accountability away from this person because she acting like she didn't get informed about the ticket and making this guy look like he is exactly. an accuser. They both wrong from the get-go because, but one, this person at his job, he's accountable for not knowing when to let the situation go, which was last week's episode and the week prior, uh, because he need to know he's at work, but he probably was done with the shit. But also, she accountable because he was already subdued at that point and she hauled off and clocked him. And nobody sat there and got into it. And now everybody want to be jumping on. And like this whole like thought process and shit is just my issue with people is there's no accountability. Every time you do bring up something, motherfuckers want to point to a situation that ain't got nothing to do with it. Well, police done did this before. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the now. We can't, about get, right we can't get now. to the future if we can't fix the present, especially if all we want to do is focus on the past. So with that being said, you know what I'm saying? My issue is where we need to go just needs to be better than what we did before. Um, we can go ahead and end it on that note. So where, cause like I said, we'll, we'll be on this rabbit hole forever. I just want people to be better. I just saw those. Um, it's a great episode. Lots hey, of lots thank of you. Life. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Let everybody know where they can find you at. Let everybody know uh, what you got in stores, how they can get in touch with you, whether they want to get uh, you on to DJ a party, a function, anything, or how they can find your podcast, The Grown Folks Table. Table. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I got it. I know. Hey. Right. Um, you can follow the podcast on the grown folks table on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my Instagram is what's happening. H A T T E N underscore Terman. Um, Odell Terman on Facebook. Um, I don't really be on Twitter like that. Twitter just for me, but, um, yeah, that's, that's where you can find me. Uh, shoot me a DM, you know, slide up in the DMs, you know what I'm saying? On some business shit. I ain't gonna respond on nothing else. Um, yeah, bro, that, that's really where you can that's really where you can get at me, you know what I'm saying? And, and we can go from there. Um I do want to say from by my heart, thank you for having me on and I speak for my co host, although she wasn't able to be here. Thank you for just giving the opportunity and we definitely gonna um return the love. Get you she ain't been wanting to be something. around me since I asked that one question. She ain't bro, she listen, wanted, and that's why and that's why I want her to come on so so she ain't so wanna I ain't even seen her. 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 I've never seen listen. her but she, I had one question. She just has not wanted to fuck with me since. I don't know if I, I turned her off. And I, I'm usually nah, like, nah, especially nah, with nah, women, nah. I'm a people person, but I'm definitely like a women's person. Like women love me. So I'm just it's, really, I feel like it's love. just nah, a question. It's, it's, all, it's all love. We definitely talked about but that. I, it's yeah, all love. I feel like if she seen me, she would get over it. Like she'd be like, yeah, nah, bro. Nothing. Like I said, bro, she got some, you know, family, personal stuff going on. So me and her really, and we, we really talk like at least once, twice a week. And we ain't even, you know what I mean? Connected. So, I already know, but like I said, definitely when we get your own. We definitely gonna get some topics where you know what I'm saying y'all can speak y'all mind. So definitely looking forward to that. Tell I said hey and tell us it. Tell I said hey, hey. <laughs> you can do the face if you want to. You could just send the, the pictures like hey. Bro, I can't. I can't do the face. I'm not light skin. I'm not like neither am I. Neither I, can't am I. Do the face. That's light. So yeah, right. but I appreciate you coming on. Make sure y'all check out uh the Eight Morning Ninety Two podcast YouTube. Uh, Apple, Spotify, wherever we have, make sure you get us up. If you got any questions, make sure you hit us up at the eight more than 92 podcast at gmail.com. 8MT9 score, 92 underscore uh, podcast is the IG and the Twitter and everything else. Make sure y'all check out the merch, which the link is in the bio on the IG page and Twitter and everything. Make sure y'all check out the grown folks table. Uh, they're on everywhere as well. 
Uh, make sure you also check out this episode. And I'm on a question or so of theirs as well. And make sure you also listen because this will be a fire episode. Uh, you got anything else to say? Uh, yesterday's problems are not today's problems. All right. And yesterday's numbers are not today's numbers. We're going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Thinking this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full 